because the black magic voodoo cannibals have launched war. Haiti now is essentially in a gang civil war. Haiti is going through a tough time. Their prime minister has been chased out of the country and it is being run by a man that goes by the nickname Barbecue. So this guy Barbecue, he is got the nickname as a kid, I think, and he's kind of known for lighting people on fire and potentially eating them. That's kind of his thing. But the problem with Haiti is that uh, two things. Clinton Foundation, a while ago, basically promised to build a port in Haiti because they wanted to bring international business to help their economy. What ended up happening was $2.3 billion were spent to date and then the port wasn't built, and 55% of that money went to American contractors. What's happened in Haiti with the Clinton Foundation is a disgrace. So we kind of failed them there, unfortunately. Number two, uh, the CIA was involved with the assassination of the previous prime minister. Uh, the, it's well known now that these informants were involved with the assassination somehow. So that's a little bit suspect as well. So basically, we have altruistically basically said, oh, you know, we care about Haiti when in all, by all metrics, we've failed them completely. Uh, the last time Haiti was on the radar, Trump referred to them using colorful language. His outrage grows after his vulgar insult, calling African nations assholes. What angered people wasn't the conditions of Haiti. It was that Trump said that. So they took the opposite approach, saying that Haiti, uh, Haiti is already great. Haiti's a great country. It's a great place to live, which is just, I mean, laughably false. All, like Conan O'Brien went there, like all these people, they're like, oh, he's great, he's great. It's a third world country that basically lives in chaos. And I, of course, I feel horrible for the conditions going on there. I think now we are presented with real questions about uh, taking in migrants from a country that is basically lawless and, and has been taken over by a gang leader. I, I don't know what the solution is, but here's what the solution isn't. So basically there were videos going around of people cannibalizing other people in Haiti. So this article says that this cannibalism is a right-wing smear against Haitian migrants amid crisis. Uh, if you go down to the third paragraph, it literally verifies that someone was eaten in Haiti. So the real problem to NBC News is not that the United States might be bringing people into our country that eat other people, it's that right-wing influencers and Elon Musk are telling people that people eat other people. Now, our current immigration policy, this goes back to how inhumane all this is, there's no verification anywhere. And plus, we're, we're importing people from a country now ruled by a gang, by a guy whose name is Barbecue. So we could be bringing people on boats who we have no idea who they are. We don't know their background. We don't know if they eat people or not. What we do know is that people have been eaten on Haiti. So that's number one problem to me, that you're now passing off to Americans in random parts of the country by bringing in people that we can't verify, we can't vet, we can't do any of this. Number two, they're being brought to migrant shelters. So migrant shelter in Chicago recently just had a measles outbreak. Uh, it's the biggest measles outbreak since measles were a problem in America. I can't remember when that was. Um, and it's because we're bringing in migrants uh, and putting them in shelters close proximity not knowing anything about their health background, not knowing anything about their whether or not they eat people, don't know anything about their criminal background. Now, I have to say, I feel really, I do genuinely feel bad for Haitians that have to live amidst all this gang violence and are like scared for their lives. But what I can tell you is the answer is not bring people en masse from a place where we know there's notorious gang violence into America to let random Americans deal with this. Um, what would solve all this is a consistent immigration policy that is intelligently designed, uh, ruthlessly enforced, and has the best interest of Americans and everyone else involved. Um, clearly, that's not been accomplished by the Biden administration or anyone else. And uh, I even saw too, like, so all these media games are being played now, right? It's like, oh, let's call them right-wing smear job, whatevers. So I go back to El Salvador. So El Salvador... Um, Nye Bukele chimed in on this as well. He said, we dealt with the same problems, the same problems in El Salvador that are going on right now in Haiti. Uh, so El Salvador had MS-13 gang basically run their country, um, completely paralyzed their economy, living everyday life, because to get into the gang, you basically had to kill people, random people on the street. The worst of the worst, tattooed everywhere, everyone knew about it. Nye Bukele comes to power 
And he basically makes number one priority in the country, locking up every gang member in the country, putting them away, making El Salvador safe again. It's now considered one of the safest places in the Western Hemisphere, statistically. And people are still, so media games are happening against Nayib Bukele, saying that he's a dictator, saying that he's this and that. So maybe my whole problem with all of this is like the media is again the enemy of the people, but we don't have to live this way. So I, maybe I'm just like, my whole twilight zone about all this is like, the media, instead of presenting truth, is attacking people for revealing that cannibals could be coming into the country. And we all just have to accept the fact that cannibals should be, could be coming into the country. And like, we just have to live with that. That's just a part of being American. And I, again, back to painting the face of what Logan is saying, I do not want to live that way. I don't have to live that way. I plan on electing someone that has the will to make sure that we don't live that way anymore. And sure, it's going to be a long uphill battle, but I'd rather be moving in the direction of actually solving problems around here instead of working my hardest to visit abortion clinics and kill babies. Like, again, it's also crazy. This isn't the main priority of the Biden administration. The borders are, is Kamala Harris. She's visited abortion clinics more than she's visited the southern border. Like, that is this all feels like I'm living in the twilight zone. Like, we're not addressing real problems in the country and we need real change. Uh, that's where I'm at.